So I want to show you one of the most important documents in our course, and that is the course syllabus. And for a lot of you, this may be sort of your impression of it may be that it's the most boring document of the whole course, but I uh, assure you it has a lot of the policies and procedures and how you'll be graded and what's expected of you. It's um, really the guiding document for both me, the team leads, and you. So I want to walk you through it really quick. So you'll find it over here on the left hand side under course information. And you'll notice that it's the very first link here in the middle um, uh, on, this, on this page. And so you're going to click and it will open the PDF document in a new window. Um, from here you can print it out, you can download it and save it to your computer. Um, you can zoom in and out um, so that you can see it better on your screen. Um, but I just want to quickly go through uh, this document with you and kind of verbally walk you through it. So, um, of course, it has very imp important information about um, my contact information, where you can find me on campus, how you can get in contact with me. Next, we have our CNI graduate program goals. And um, just very quickly, our, we have a, a goal as a faculty to really prepare educators in terms of knowledge of research-based curriculum and instruction best practices. Um, the application of that knowledge uh, of curriculum and instruction best practice. And then of course how to communicate that knowledge um, to a professional audience. So those are our three overarching goals for our program. Next you'll find the course description for EDTC 5338. So you'll hear us a lot in the course refer to this as the Tarleton OOC. Uh, or the free course, but this is the, the actual course in the catalog if you decide you want to get this for graduate credit. Um, that will be transcribed if you make an A or, or B in the course. So it's EDTC 5338, and the description is that it will arm you with critical knowledge and skills for designing and implementing online learning objects, tools, and activities to engage and empower learners. Um, easy to say, a lot harder to do, and we'll get into all of um, how we do it uh, later on in the course. Our goal in the course is really for you to um, develop deep, enduring understandings um, of the broad ideas in the course um, so that you can take and use in lots of different contexts within your classroom and with your students. And that's going to include a deeper knowledge of strategically integrating a variety of instructional technologies for teaching and learning. It's going to involve you connecting and collaborating with fellow participants in the course um, and with experts in the field to build up your personal learning network. One of the most important things for me is that you'll sustain this even after the course finishes. So drilling down a little bit more deeply into the learning outcomes for the course, we've split them up into knowledge outcomes and skill outcomes. And you'll see, I'm not going to read through all of these, but I'd like you to. You're going to see all of these as we progress through the course in terms of the way that the modules are structured. So that explore, learn, connect, collaborate, experiment, apply. Um, framework is going to help deepen your knowledge and improve your skills with regard to instructional technology in the classroom. So there's no required textbooks or materials that you need for this course. It is 100% free, but in terms of the technology that you need to, to be able to connect with us, you do need a high-speed, reliable internet connected computer, and um, you'll need an up-to-date browser like Chrome, Firefox, or Safari. Internet Explorer is not recommended with Blackboard right now. And then I'd also suggest that you uh, maybe invest in a headset if, you, if you're in a noisy environment and you need to concentrate. Um, that can be very useful as well. Another thing to mention here is, although it's not required, if you do want to connect with us on your mobile devices, so your phone or your um, tablet device, there are apps for Blackboard, for Google Drive, Google+, Twitter, um, that uh, you'll have instructions for later on downloading to your smart devices. In terms of the entrance competencies for this graduate level course, um, you do need computer skills such as um, being able to comfortably navigate the internet, um, troubleshooting common um, computer problems, uploading, downloading, attaching files, using a word processor uh, and presentation software, using folders to organize files on your computer, just basic uh, kind of computer skills. And then time management skills are also critical in an online course and your team leads have given you some good tips for um, time management skills and, and tips for being successful in uh, the week one module. And you'll also find some uh, tips in the uh, online success toolbox. And then likewise, you need, of course, good reading, writing, and communication skills to be successful in an online course.
Next is the writing proficiency statement that you'll find standard in all of our graduate course syllabi. And it just states that we expect your writing as a graduate student to be on point and that we can't spend a whole lot of time proofreading for you. And so as a graduate student, turning in assignments that are free of non-content related errors in um, grammar, spelling, punctuation, etc. Okay, next we have the method of instruction. And um, this is a course that I've designed to be fully online. And I utilize the principles of both constructivism and connectivism. And you'll learn a little bit more about that in um, week two of the course. But because of the size of this course, um, we have over 180 registrants. Um, I'm lucky to have 16 leads here to help me facilitate the course. And hopefully this will make it more personal, interactive, and meaningful for you. And so we're going to have lots of interactive content. Um, you're going to see lots of demonstration videos. You'll have lots of readings, small group collaborative exercises, social media posts, um, individual experiments, reflective activities, and individual self-assessments. And so that's what's going to keep you busy and I hope engaged for the next few weeks we have to spend together. Okay, so this next number is very important to write down and keep somewhere prominently displayed around your computer. If you have any issues during the course, you can call this number and get help, um, technical help, as well as any other questions you have, they can escalate your call to me or to your team lead. So the Tarleton Blackboard Help Desk is a wonderful resource for you to utilize during our course. Next, we have a resource for you um, if you'd like to get better acclimated with Blackboard. It's called ondemand.blackboard.com. And what you're watching here uh, in the week one orientation videos is what's a little bit more customized to our course. But the on-demand um, Blackboard site um, has just a little bit more details about the specific tools that you'll come across in Blackboard. This next section highlights the importance of you reaching out um, to other members of the course. And so if you ever feel isolated in the course at any point, um, reach out to me or your team lead, uh, to the help desk or your fellow participants. Um, because it's so critical for you to make those connections to not feel isolated in an online course. So I've given you some information here uh, about doing that. Okay, next we have the course topics outline. And so you can see we have a lot to pack in in a very short amount of time that we have together. Um, but this first week is all about a course overview and introduction. And then the tool that you're looking at this week is learning management systems, since that's basically what we're using to deliver this online course. It's a great opportunity to help you learn more about learning management systems. In week two, we're looking at understanding educational technology trends and issues, kind of a foundational week. And the tools that we're going to look at are online communication and online collaboration tools. Week three will be all about designing and developing curriculum with technology. And the tools that we'll look at here are content and resource curation and creation tools. Week four will be about teaching information literacy and digital citizenship. And we'll look at websites and apps. And then week five will be all about spurring change as teacher leaders. And we'll look at multimedia tools. Next is the section that you probably scrolled straight to before you even started watching this video. And that is how you'll be graded in this course. And so like most graduate courses that you've probably taken in the past, I use a 100 point grading scale um, with the standard um, A, B, C, D, and F scale. Um, there's no rounding in determining final grades, but the more important thing I think here is how your assignments of grades are split up. So you'll see that you have five team discussions and four class tweets that are 20%, four key point uh, Google Doc contributions, 20%, four technology experiment activities, 20%, five self-assessment quizzes at 10%, and five reflective entries at 30%. And so I'm going to kind of go through and talk about each of these deliverables. Okay, so the first two deliverables that I'm going to talk about uh, were designed to get you to interact at three different levels. Um, so your team discussion is um, trying to get you to interact with your team, which is um, anywhere from 25 to 30 students. Um, the class tweets are to get you to interact at the class um, level, so to the class as a whole. And your key point document is to get you to converse with your small group of about five to six peers. Okay, so for your team discussion, and this is starting again in week two, you'll be added to a Google Plus community, and you'll have instructions for doing all of this at that point, so don't worry about it just yet. 
but you're going to get to use Google Plus and Google Plus Communities as a platform for dialoguing with your team. And then again, starting in week two, um, you're going to be required to send out a tweet to the class hashtag, which is Tarleton Ook. And that's just a way for you to share resources and communicate as a class around the common theme of the Tarleton Ook. The key point Google document is um, something that you'll collaborate on with your small group and that's where you're going to take a broad idea, a takeaway idea that really hit home for you from the content from that week and you'll share that in your Google document with your small group. And then you're really going to flesh out that idea with a related resource and a description of how that key point applies to your own teaching practice. Okay, so up next we have the technology experiment activities. And this first week you are kind of getting the chance to experiment with learning management systems from a student perspective. And I did give you a moonwalking bear activity that you can do as well um, from the instructor designer perspective. But the true experiments will start in week two. And this is where you're gonna watch a video demonstration of a tool and then you're gonna get the chance to go out and actually experiment with that tool. And what you'll do is you'll take a screenshot of the experiment and then you'll reflect upon it um, in your uh, reflection document. And in that reflection, that's not only what you learned in terms of the content, um, but also with the experiment um, of a related tool. And so you'll provide that screenshot in your reflection document to show me and your team lead that you actually did experiment with that tool. Now this reflection document is shared between you, your team lead, and I and you'll have instructions for setting up uh, that document this first week. But the idea is that each week you use the Google document to reflect and your team lead or I can dialogue with you about questions that you have, your insights, and your progress in the course as you go. Okay, and last we have the self-assessment quizzes each week. And these are very low stakes assessments that are designed um, to allow you to show mastery of the content. So you can actually take them as many times as you need to to demonstrate that mastery. Okay, just a couple of notes related to the course. Um, you do have to complete this uh, course with a B or better to receive credit for it on your transcript at Tarleton. Um, and likewise, you have to complete it with a B or better to receive CPE credits. This second note just again emphasizes the importance of your participation and, and interaction each week and getting all of your deliverables done before the deadline. And as you can see, I strongly advise that you not wait until Sunday to start participating for the week because then you just don't get as much out of it and you're shortchanging yourself and your peers. Um, I strongly believe that you get out of this course what you put into it. So don't shortchange yourself here. And in note three, I just talk about how the syllabus is a fluid document, a planning document, um, and that it can change. And so if it does change, I'll let you know at least a week ahead of time. This next section is our standards of conduct and academic honesty. And just like other um, statements that you've seen in other syllabi, it's setting the expectation that I and the institution, Tarleton, expect you to maintain high standards of personal and scholarly conduct. And so again, you get out of this course what you put into it. So any form of cheating or doing someone else's work uh, in this class is not acceptable. The final section here is the CNI graduate program expectations of professionalism. And these are behaviors that we expect from our own students and model for our own students. And so that has to do with communicating appropriately and effectively with stakeholders, collaborating with colleagues, mentors, and supervisors, um, de demonstrating commitment to the teaching profession and exercising leadership, um, taking responsibility for your own professional teaching practices and professional growth, and upholding the code of ethics for Texas educators. Okay, so that's it with regard to the course syllabus. Um, like I said, it's a good idea to print it out so you have it next um, to your computer during the course. And so to get back to our course, all you need to do now is click the X on this tab and it will take you right back to the tab you were on in our course. And in the next video, um, I'm going to go through the course schedule with you.